Hello, I am your talk host, Arlene Barsenas, and welcome to Impact Community. Today, we have a very special guest in our studio. He has been a recipient of many awards here in the city of Patterson and throughout the state of New Jersey. He has received awards such as the National Association of Black Social Workers, Who's Who in America, Mayor Civic Award, State Assembly, Patterson Municipal Council Award, and NAACP Awards as well, just to name a few. He is also known to be a consultant and board member to many numerous organizations. He is also one of the top certified trainers and nutritionists in the state of New Jersey, along with being a motivational speaker and an author of a book as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me here. I appreciate it. Yes. Uh, wonderful. Do you, would you like to give special greetings to anyone out there in the city? Well, to my family, as always, my wonderful staff, whom without this program, um, I would not have the success, success that I have now. And definitely to Tony Green for inviting me, and my staff and myself wish her a quick and speedy recovery. Yes, definitely. Godspeed. Yeah. Well, just wanted to initiate and speak to you a little bit more, more so that the community could get to know you. Sure. Uh, you have very deep roots in the city of Patterson. Mm -hmm. You've done great work throughout the community, not only in the field of education, philanthropy as well, mm -hmm. and community, community advocacy. But let us know about the earlier years mm -hmm. and how did that start and how, some of your experiences. Share that with us. Yeah. Well, I'm a um, lifelong resident of Patterson. Mm -hmm. I grew up in what is known as the First Ward, um, down by CCP and Patterson Street, um, which is now where the coat arms are. My dad was always very active in my life. Uh, my mom, early on, had to move back down south to where originally we were from and sort of helped take care of her family, so um, that was kind of troubling. But I have um, eight brothers and sisters, wow. um, yeah, yeah, and I'm the oldest male out of the eight of them. So I have um, six older sisters who was responsible for taking care of me, making sure that everything was going well in my life. Um, and like I said, my dad was my motivational uh, mentor who each and every day just went out and did what he had to do to take care of our family. So I'm a product of School 28, School 4. Um, wound up going to John F. Kennedy High School and graduated from John F. Kennedy High School and wound up going to um, college in New Jersey. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Was there any particular person, event, or thing in your personal life that, um, that actually inspired you to become the great leader that, you've, that you are here in the city of Patterson? Is there anything particular, anything positively that impacted you mm -hmm. and in taking on these leadership roles? Mm -hmm. Well, I would have to say my dad early on. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, once again, like I said, um, you know, went to work every day to take care of a family of eight. And even when my mom had to leave and go back down south, um, he would take us down south on a regular. As a matter of fact, he would leave me down there every summer to also help out. So I understood the importance of having family here in Patterson as well down um, in North Carolina. And then, um, you know, in my later teen years, um, I would have to say it was um, a couple of my teachers that I had at John F. Kennedy High School who, when others said that I wasn't college material, you know, took the position that I was and even drove me up to Rampo College and showed me what college life was like. And then after I left Rampo College and graduated, I would just say without question, uh, my mentor and teacher, Mr. Al Moody, who is oh, an wow. icon in the city of Patterson, yes. um, took me under his wings, you know, said if you're going to work here at Youth Services Bureau, you have to become an active member in this community. And that's how I got involved in Rites of Passage. That's how I got involved in the community and um, kind of skyrocketed from there. Mm -hmm. So you've had a, a lot of great mentors along the way and strong male figures as well. Yes, indeed. And, um, mm -hmm. and it looks like you, with all, with all the work and service that you've done, you're definitely passing it forward. Yes, correct? especially through BUDS, without question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you are actually the founder and the president of BUDS, which is B-U-D-S, the correct. acronyms. Mm -hmm. and with that program, you're actually dealing with young male from the ages of 13 and 19. Mm -hmm. And what I understand is that you established this organization back in 1997, correct? That's correct. And uh, what, made, what moved you to create this organization? It's, it's interesting because um, I was a teen dad early on, before I left John F. Kennedy High School. And um, 
when I got back to Patterson after graduating from college, I realized that I had no idea what the responsibilities of being a dad was. Um, even though I came from a strong foundation, right. you know, I ran into some adult women who were doing a rights of passage program. And um, as I stated earlier, this group was working along with Mr. Moody in his Rights of Passage program. Mm -hmm. And they kind of challenged me that I needed to establish a Rights of Passage program for the young men who were their sons. And they would, in turn, help raise my daughter to the steps that she needed to go through to be a young lady. So I got a challenge from sisters, actually, to get involved in Rights of Passage. And then Mr. Moody brought me on board. They had a, a Rights of Passage program um, that they brought me into. And I started studying Rights of Passage. I started studying under Mr. Moody and other men. We started traveling around the country, uh, learning how to set up Rights of Passage programs, what it takes to get it going. And it kind of skyrocketed and took off from there. So you're using the term rites of passage a lot. Mm -hmm. And for those that may not know or may not sure. be too familiar with that term, mm -hmm. if you could lead us a little bit into that. And what, sure. does, that, what does that exactly mean and yeah. what does it entail? Yeah. Rites of passage is a product of what we used to do in African traditional society where you would take young men, men would take young men out of the community, out of the village, and take them out into you know, the, the woods or into the other parts of the um, climate or the culture or the um, area of the village and teach them what it took to be men. Taught them about their history, taught them about their culture, you know, set them up in a position where you had to learn how to be responsible and how to be accountable to yourself and to the family and to the village. So after they did that, there were a number of tests that had to be done. Mm -hmm. And when you passed those tests, you were not allowed to even consider yourself a man until you went through those stages. So rites of passage are the stages that young men have to go through to get to be a man. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. And I like it because it's tied into a historical piece as well. Mm -hmm. and, and it's true, you know, as a, as a young male or even as a young lady, you have to go undergo through certain processes mm -hmm. so you can become that strong individual in the future as well. So what are the core missions of BUDS overall? Mm -hmm. And um, some of the organizations and services that mm -hmm. are under BUDS? Yeah. Once again, the core mission of BUDS is specifically to identify young men from the city of Patterson, 13 to 19 years of age. Mm -hmm and help them to understand the steps taken, as I said earlier, that they must go through if they really want to get to this thing called manhood. Okay, it has to have seven basic formatic steps, and one of them is having a first relationship with God. Okay, Wonderful. Having a relationship within your family, understanding the importance of family, understanding the importance of family and culture, understanding the importance of philanthropy, meaning having your own business, own, having ownership, understanding the importance of education, education to the point where you one day can establish your own foundation for what it means to be self-sufficient and independent, understanding your community and becoming actively involved in your community, okay? And then last but not least, having goals that are clear cut based on your Sankofa, your past, your present, and your future, and making sure that you understand that these steps will allow you to be successful as it has already been stated by God, the creator of all things. So BUDS is actually a seven step process and there are more steps to it, right. but these are the elements of getting things moving so that young men understand that being a man is not, is not just how many women you have, what type of car you drive, having exactly. the latest fashion, you know, um, getting involved in street life, you know, that there are other elements that offset that. And these are things that are going back thousands of years that have successfully allowed us to be the people that we are. And not only that, but those, those core missions and values that you're actually teaching them, those are things that are instilled within them. So those actual tools, it's not something material, it's actually something that they can utilize because it's within them and they could give it forth to their families and their community. Correct. On top of being a founder of this great organization, you're also uh, the director for the school-based youth service programs and mental health counseling agency, mm -hmm. which is located at J uh, JFK High School, which is your original high school, correct? That's correct, right. And it also falls under the New Jersey Department of Children and Families and City of Patterson Department of Health and Human Services for over 18 years you've been involved there. Mm -hmm. So please share with us what programs are under or other organizations mm -hmm. and services mm -hmm. fall under uh, the umbrella of all these uh, programs. Well, first let me just a little bit explain what youth services um, is all about and school-based youth services program. Um, if you look at a triangle, 
School-Based Youth Services Program is part of that triangle. It's a partnership with the Department of Health and Human Services, um, the Department of Children and Families, and the school system. So the triangle is sort of set up this way where services come through JFK High School for young people aged 13 and 19 where they can navigate services on site, meaning that if a student needs employment assistance, if a student needs to you know, identify SAT or fee waiver or college information, if a family needs services, for instance, like we just had the you know, situation with you know, the storm of Sandy and right. in the Northeastern, you know, yes. where students can once again get information about what do I do if I have a personal situation, a personal crisis. A lot of times what we find out is a lot of times students want to tap into services and a lot of places are closed by the time they get out of school or by the time their families are getting off work. So the objective of School Base is to make sure that services are on site for students, mm -hmm. that they can come down during their lunch period or after school and directly get involved and receive these services on a one-stop shopping basis. And since it's 13 and 19, from their freshman year to their senior year, mm -hmm. these services are available to them, and therefore they're navigating each year of their high school experience, going off to college, and still having those services available to them. So that's the premises of school-based programs, and there are actually 96 school-based programs in the state of New Jersey, as quiet as it's kept. Yes. And the one that I'm actually the director of um, has been at Kennedy for 22 years. Exactly. Yeah, so that's sort of how school base works. Um, some of the programs that come out of school base, uh, once again in that triangle is what we call the basic general counseling program. Um, school base, if you've ever you know, been to school base, you'll walk in, it's set, a, set up similar to this stage where there are couches, big screen televisions, computer room, um, open space for group activities, you'll see students playing games. That's sort of like the hook to provide other serious intervention, you know, one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one support groups, once again family intervention. And under that is what we call the PLP program, which right. is a partnership between Prevent Child Abuse, Head Start, and School Base. And that's for 12 infant toddlers, uh, moms and dads, so that the students won't have to drop out of school. Mm -hmm. So the kids are taken across the street to Head Start, and the students can continue to go to school and finish their education. And then the third piece is what we call the Family Empowerment Program, which is right. also another grant. And that's your more serious family intervention. For families, once again, who are going through serious family dynamics, but need nice. that support, may not have the insurance, may not have the funding and that's a two-team partnership where you have a family therapist and you have a resource person who actually goes into homes goes out in the community identify the clients and work directly with the family mm -hmm. so those are just some of the programs and they are community-based programs but I'll get back I'll get to those um, later on that's wonderful because um, not only are you servicing the students but the families as well so you're actually strengthening uh, that the fabric of the family unit and, and uh, assisting them and giving them those tools to, to execute a little bit more better um, with real challenges in life. Um, what other things do parents could tap into as mm -hmm. well? What other services there? Yeah, well, I talked about the um, resource per specialist who provides parents with job opportunities, training. Yeah. Uh, parents, uh, I actually have a community liaison board, which is required by my grant, um, where I have at least five parents whose kids have already came through the program, went off to college. Some of them, like I, we talked about off camera, actually working for the city of Patterson. So I have parents on my board. Um, those parents are trained on how to be a part of a board. Uh, parents can also tap into the resources that are available. Once again, anytime there's a situation within the family structure and they need information, they need resources from the community, referrals, you know, or once again, just the parenting workshops that we do. I do a lot with Mr. Moody and um, the uh, Patterson Board of Education, what we call positive development workshops. Mm -hmm. So right. parents are actually invited to participate in those workshops because that's the key, as you stated earlier, that family foundation is the key, making families strong again um, and cohesive. So there's a number of different resources that are all available to uh, families, especially parents. Mm -hmm. And I have a great, great family resource board. Without them, to be honest with you, a lot of the work that we do, I, I probably would not be able to do along with my staff. That's great. You're actually doing a full circle because you're servicing different parts of the community and the family elements as well. Yes. Under your Silk City School-Based Youth Services, I also see that you're, you mentioned that you also provide counseling mm -hmm. and mental health services. Many of our communities, unfortunately, uh, see mental health issues or topics as a taboo. Mm -hmm. And even on a national level, I mean, there's mm -hmm. not enough uh, awareness that, and that is that is talked about. Mm -hmm. What do you do to address some of this, uh, these issues that that, that do remain in our in our city and within our society and communities um, 
to you bring any awareness to that to the forefront in the city of Patterson? Yeah, without question. Um, we partner up with a lot of the agencies in the city of Patterson. I mean, we partner up with uh, St. Joseph's, St. Clair's. We partner up with the Patterson Counseling Center. Um, we partner up with Family Success Center, which is actually right downstairs. Wonderful. You know, we partner up with the Board of Education. Like I said, they're an um, inside partner with us in providing in kind services for us. Um, we partner up with uh, Workforce Development. I mean, William Patterson, Boys and Girls Club. I mean, and that's the key, once again, outside of having a strong foundation of parent slash youth involved, you gotta have partnership with agencies that have evidence-based, meaning that they've been around for a while, they've shown success in terms of being able to provide services, and a lot of times, through their grants, they need these type of partnerships as well. So the key is partnering with agencies that can help you provide services on an ongoing basis so that when families are reaching for services, the, door, the doors are not closed, when the parents call or students look for services, they don't get that answering machine and no follow-up phone call exactly. that you can actually refer and parents and kids will know, hey, something's actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been our success. So we don't look at it like we're a school base who's you know, just able to make all things happen. We realize that it's our partners and the community agencies that we work with. Yes. Now, I just want to go back a little bit and highlight something that you mentioned earlier. Uh, you indicated that there's about 96 different school-based programs mm -hmm. throughout the state of New Jersey. However, mm -hmm. your school-based program has been highlighted a lot in, and is, has served as a beacon and as a model mm -hmm. um, throughout the state of New Jersey. Now, how does that make you feel mm -hmm. knowing that a lot of these other programs throughout the state has actually emulated yours coming out of the city of Patterson? Yeah, it makes me feel great. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic honor uh, to know that usually when new programs are started or implemented that the state is calling on us to say, hey, listen, we have a new program that's about to start up. We want to send them to mm -hmm. look at your site. We want to come to your site so they can get a feel for how things are going. And, you know, sometimes Patterson gets a black eye around things. Mm -hmm. You know, they get a story here and there, third largest city in the state of New Jersey, and as yeah. soon as something happens, well, Patterson is the worst city in the state, exactly. as the governor would say. So at the state level, you know, at the top of the echelon, the state level, our funding comes out of the Department of Health and Ch uh, Children and Families, where DIFIS funding comes from, where Senior Citizens funding comes from. So I said at the say, everyone at the state level is fully aware of the type of things that we do in Patterson through school base. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it makes me feel great knowing that I'm able to shine a different light when something in Patterson does not go right or is looked at to be in a negative, our program is shining a light that says Patterson is working, things are happening in Patterson, there's positive things going on, and school base is one of them. Definitely. So, feel good about that. That's great, and as a result um, of your program, September 27 is actually proclaimed as School Base Youth Service Day mm -hmm. in the city of Patterson, and it was recognized by both the mayor mm -hmm and the governor as well. So tell us a little bit more about what does uh, this celebration and commemoration of school-based youth mm -hmm. service day look like? Yeah. Do students get to participate and become volunteers? Do parents get involved as well? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about how that all started. Yeah, w what we usually do is have all of our partners come together. And once again, um, you know, last year we had a huge resource fair down at Christopher Hope, which is in the heart of the First Ward. And we invited all of our partners out and we had them do press, like five minute presentations on the services that they offer and we asked them to bring information and giveaways to the community and we talk about the history of school base and we talk about the services that are offered and we give parents and students an opportunity to once again become a part of school base and then we had a, a meal where we invite the parents out sometimes the students will cook for their parents and then once again we have the parents come out and they would talk about the school base program and the state we invite the state out we invite the mayor out, we invite everybody out who has a stake in our city and to say look we Need to collaboratively work together so we always use that day as a day to bring the community together and we've had pretty much we've had pretty good success doing that so we're very proud of that too congratulations on that thank you so much so through the Sook City School Based Youth Program, there is also servicing of summer camps and recreation for the youth. Mm -hmm. How important is that for our children? Mm -hmm. Do you think we have enough services for our youth and enough funding for recreation in the city of Patterson? Do you think we could use more? We can use more funding for the city of Patterson recreation. As a matter of fact, we can use more funding for the entire state <laughs> of New Jersey of Patterson um, within, we use for the city of Patterson than itself. Uh, right now, um, the Department of Recreation is only 2%. Wow. of the entire city budget. 
And as we speak, um, we originally had 22 evening center programs that were operating between 3 and 9 o'clock at night in almost every major school and almost every major ward of the city, which is still not up and running right now. So, and if we know anything about how the city functions, this is a time in which most of our youth get in trouble between 3 and 6. Yeah. So when you talk about funding, we have the funding there to run these programs, but there's a glitch in the bureaucracy of our city. Mm -hmm. So we need to look very closely at that. So yes, we always need more money. We're the third largest city in the state, so we always need more money. Right. We have programs, but some of these programs have lost their funding, which means they have no staff. I don't have enough staff. And we have to make sure that all of our agencies together collectively pick up where we you know, are falling short mm -hmm. and work as a group, and that's not happening right now. So we definitely, without question, have to make sure that our city officials, our state understands that we need these evening centers open, we need more money for these programs, right. and it, it's gonna require the uh, citizens um, the adult citizens to step up and get our youth more actively involved in making a fuss about this. Otherwise, this is always going to be the same. So we need more money across the board. More engagement out of community and citizens. Without, without, without question. Because it's critical, those hours. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. of course, without question. And we see it every day. We talk about, you know, the various crimes that take place. And we know that there's a lot of our youth doing some great things. But in, in, those, in those what they call hot spots, once again, if we look at what's not there, we'll see that some of the things I'm talking about in those so-called hotspots where some of the evening centers are not open, right. where some of the faith-based are not opening their doors, where some of the schools are shutting down early. Um, these are things that at one point in this city were always open and always visible. You know, um, one of my mentors, Mr. Lionel Muhammad, is sitting right over there. You know, I remember going to watch him play basketball all over the city. You, wherever you went, you can go to a gym you'd have a program going on. These things don't exist. And as much as I blame our city, as much as I blame our state, I have to more so blame us as parents because our parents would not have stand for this. Right. Uh, so we really have a responsibility to step up and make sure that these things happen. That's one of the reasons why I do BUDS. That's one of the reasons why I do the Afufa. That's one of the reasons why I make sure my staff understands that we have a full commitment to this city. It's the only way you can really make change is to be actively involved. You can't do it on a quiet, you have to be loud. Sometimes you have to kick the door in. Exactly. Well, you know, there's that beautiful and wonderful African proverb, it takes a village to raise, you know, a child sometimes. So yep. that definitely should be implemented. Yeah. And you also mentioned a FUFA, mm -hmm. and that's under your supervision, which is actually a cultural diversity club Correct. within the school-based uh, youth programs that you have. Correct. And a FUFA, which is very cleverly, uh, is it cleverly acronym, it stands for All for One, and one for all. Correct. So right there, you're actually talking about unity within Correct. that model. Mm -hmm. So how important is diversity to you and Excuse making me. sure that all these services are equally and readily available for all the youth? Mm -hmm. And also, um, not only for these uh, school programs, but as well within BUDS as well, how yeah. important is diversity? Well, it's probably at the top of the ladder, Al along with having a clear understanding of your own culture and history, because before you can appreciate others, you have to appreciate yourself. Exactly. But what we find with Afufa is that Afufa allows all the other clubs that are on the school base to come together. So it's like Afufa is the umbrella. And Buds, Emoja, okay. you know, Each One Teach One, all these other clubs, PLP, um, come under that umbrella. And the way Afufa operates is it identifies students from all the other clubs inside of JFK and it invites them to come in and share what it is that your club is all about. Um, come in and tell us if you're having various celebrations, like Afufa celebrates African Ancestry Month, Afufa celebrates Hispanic Awareness Month, Afufa celebrates um, Al Fariha, it celebrates Muslim Ramadan, it celebrates, you know, all the other cultures, mm -hmm. most important events and days, and this allows each student to feel like, hey, I have a role to play, someone understands me, wants to learn more about me, and appreciates who I am, and I think for, as, as for any people, you know, that's important as it pertains to who you are and where you want to be and where you want to go. So this is a fantastic club. It started in 1997 um, with one of the students um, who wanted to have more diversity out of her faith, which was Muslim. And she decided that she wanted to change the way things were. She felt that clubs were not inclusive of all other groups, or all other ethnic, uh, ethnic cultures. So she decided to come to me, come to school base. We sat down and we talked about what could we do. I challenged her. I said, listen, find students of like-minded thinking bring them here, we'll provide the food, and then we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Next thing I know, I had about 30 or 40 students in my office with not enough food wow. to feed everybody. Uh, but here today, we're talking about the Afufa Club. The club took off 
like a whirlwind. And next thing you know, I was at a state meeting and they were making it mandatory that every school-based program has some form of um, um, cultural diversity club um, similar to a FUFA, and it's been going strong ever since. Uh, with the latest success, we just got adopted by the Patterson Rotary. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, Congratulations. And, yeah, thank you so much. And they're going to, once again, provide in kind to what we do. And there's so many other things that the FUFA Club um, has done. They just got in, just got back on November 27th from doing the Tricia Show, uh, which is uh, a spinoff from um, Oprah's old spot. So I have 15 members of the FUFA Club, young ladies, invited there to do a teen summit and that's going to be airing um, in December. So once again that's something positive for Patterson because they were at Universal Studios to do that slot, to do that show. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some of the things that we're doing and of course we were at the shelters doing the hurricanes and other things. So they're, they're a very active club. That's wonderful. Yeah. I was going to ask you if there were any um, programs also available to mentor young, young ladies but I see that Afufa actually is, is one of the organizations that umbrellas them and, yeah. and and covers and integrates them into that as well. Yeah. Well, there is a, a club called Emoja, which is actually, which means unity. That's a young lady leadership group. It's an, a spinoff of Bud. So that or, that actually exists as well. That and school base. What is the name of it again? Emoja, which means unity. So it's a spinoff of the Rights of Passage program for Buds. That's for young ladies. So Buds meets twice a week, uh, Monday and Wednesday, and Emoja follows up on Tuesday and Thursday. And then they do their community service on the weekend. And that's the group that actually went to the Tricia show, that Emoja club. Uh, so they're doing some wonderful things with the young ladies as well. They have a book club. They're actively involved in the community, um, mm -hmm. doing college tours. So there is a young ladies group, and that group, uh, I founded that group with my daughter again um, back in 98. That mm -hmm. came right behind Buds. So that, that, that group is also very strong. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. You're also recognized as one of the top certified trainers and nutritionists in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so you wear a lot of different hats. You're also <laughs> a motivational speaker, as we noted earlier, and mm -hmm. you're also an author. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about all these different roles that you take uh, that yeah. you take on mm -hmm. and also let us know what is the name of your book okay well I have my book with me um, mm -hmm. it's called today is a good day it, you it, might join it. of course yeah. not sure yeah okay. okay all right it um, tells the story of a young man that lives in the city of Patterson mm -hmm. and it walks you through his day from the time he wakes up you know to the time his day ends and what are some of the things that he'll do throughout his day to have a good day starting off with you know going to school with his little cousin who he's very close to mm -hmm. you know um, getting in school and being active in, you know, Bud's program, mentoring program, meeting with his mentor, his teachers, mm -hmm. you know, um, doing community service, you know, um, meeting with his dad after school, uh, you know, being actively involved in his, his, his um, religious um, yeah. institution, you know, and at the end of the day, making prayer. You know, so, you know, I did this book because um, to tie in what you asked me about in terms of being a trainer, you know, I, I um, started out with a program called Jersey Pioneers, which is an AAU program for young women mm -hmm. and I would travel all over the state as their trainer and at the time I was doing buds and I would you know I, I love reading love culture love history so I would go to bookstores in each state that we would stop in whether it be Chicago Detroit Texas and I would always look to see how many books out there told the story of young African-American Latino males mm -hmm. um, out of about six years of research and writing I never really found one even in New York you know I would go to some of the um, black owned bookstores and I wouldn't see one that spoke to directly to young men that parents can read to their son and say, this is a story of a young man like yourself living in the inner city, mm -hmm. telling his story as to how to good day, have a good day. Right. So I started putting this together along with my Bud's curriculum, and that's how I came up with Today is a Good Day. Okay? Um, as a trainer, um, it was something that came out of, the, once again, the curriculum of doing Bud's and the um, rites of passage. You know, um, to have spiritual growth is one thing, mm -hmm. but you know, this is the most obese country in the world, but one of the richest. Right. And what we find is with young African-American males, uh, you know, more than as funny as quiet as kept, African-American males are probably more out of shape than anybody else. Right. But yet they're really big on sports, but they eat worse than anybody else. Our kids are eating potato chips and soda in the morning, and that becomes their meal for the day. By the time they get in school, they're off the walls, and people wonder why. Right. Their brain has shut down from all the sugar and all the other impurities in their body. So my thing is to, once again, teach our kids, our young men, our young ladies, that eating properly and eating right is the most important part of your day outside of making sure that your parents are loving you up in the morning, exactly. you're making prayer, you're taking care of yourself, you're getting yourself set, um, your spirit is in the right place. That all starts with how we treat our bodies because exactly. that is our original temple. Exactly. So being a certified trainer and a nutritionist goes along with what I do in working with young men and working with families. We have to be healthy inward as well as outward. Exactly. Um, 
And definitely that's been a big, ca a huge campaign as well. That's been, and something that's been brought to the forefront nationally also because of our First Lady Michelle Correct. Obama. And uh, it's Correct. something that, you know, should be resonated a lot more because it's, it's true what you said. No, there's a lot of obesity and it's a lot of the first, um, like some some children nowadays, you see, you find them with diabetes now Correct. and hypertension Correct. at such a younger age. So Correct. this is definitely something very empowering. And now, where can you find that book? Is it where could a parent find that book? Well, they'd have to contact me. Okay. And, and the reason is, this book actually came out December last year. I, I have yet to put it out in the market uh, mm -hmm. because I'm actually doing a second book, which is a workbook to this book. Mm -hmm. And it's called Today is a Good Day, but it's an African American study guide. Uh -huh. Then there's a, there's a two part component to that because there's also a parent workbook which deals with strategies for raising your sons, but also it can be used for raising your daughters as well. But it's a, uh, a hands on walkthrough for parents, um, not to tell them how to raise their kids because you never want to do that, exactly. but you want to you provide strategies to whatever values and morals they already have in place. So this book actually, if anyone wants to get a copy of it, they can, re they can contact me. You know, but I'm one who believes that if you're going to put some Something out, you need to make sure that it has something to support it. Meaning that if I give you today is a good day, now after you've read this to your child or your child has read this, now you gotta do a little homework. You gotta follow the steps that are in here because it talks about, like I said, how to have a good day. There's a section, I'll give an example, there's a section here that talks about parents having rules for their home. Well, a lot of parents have verbal rules, but they don't have written rules. So there's a lot of chaos in terms of what's happening. In the, in the workbook, it breaks down how the rules and regulations work, how you have to have chores, how you have to have duties for each family member and how that works from the youngest to the oldest to provide balance in the household. So I haven't put this out yet. I plan on having it out in February, which is when I'll have my signing and which is when I'll actually start putting it on Facebook and I'm, I'm working through um, Lightning Press. So they'll set up some different um, venues for me. But I want to just make sure that it stays right here in Patterson too. Mm -hmm. Like they're trying to send me other barns and Noble and a few other places. I want to make sure I'm right here in Patterson. So thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about the, your book and giving us more insight about it. It definitely is about shaping and molding the young minds of our future leaders mm -hmm. and also providing them that discipline and that guideline also too to help out some parents as yes. well. Mm -hmm. But with that in mind, how important is it uh, for a child, especially a young male, uh, since I know that you've been the founder of BUDS, mm -hmm. how important is it for a young male to have a mentor, a big mm. brother, the father, for, uh, the father uh, figure role, mm -hmm. um, even a friend as well. How important mm -hmm. is that? That's key. Mm -hmm. in, in my opinion, that's probably the most important component of young men going into manhood. Mm -hmm. um, we, we appreciate, we respect, and we honor, and we pay most respect to the women who are in a position of having to raise our sons. Mm -hmm. uh, but without question, for a young man to know what it's like to be a man, to have to be able to amplify and implement and be able to see men mm -hmm. in action, see men in front of them, mm -hmm. um, see men in positions of power and leadership. And I'm not just talking about on TV, and I'm not talking about sports right. figures, all those guys are good, but they need to understand the role that a man plays in their life, whether he's in the house sometimes or in the house 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, my dad, uh, nobody was probably more angry at their father than I was, because mm -hmm. uh, like most young men, you know, played basketball, always looked to see my dad at the games, never understood why he wasn't there. You know, had to raise my two younger brothers thinking that my dad really didn't care, never really home, like I said. Um, and it was only later on in life that I realized that my dad had to work every day, yeah. literally every day. And while he, because he wasn't there, I saw that as him being absent, like the other young men around me. Um, and as I got to really get to know why that was, because my dad was a quiet, silent type, we didn't talk a lot. He became my hero because I realized he wasn't there because he was working. So what I always tell parents that I work with is it's important that you tell your sons, your children, what you do every day. You sit them down as soon as you come in and you tell them what your day was like and what you do. I always tell coaches, especially when I'm training, that outside of just talking and teaching sports and how to, do, run, a, how to you know, run a touchdown and how to throw a pass and how to hit a baseball and how to hit, shoot a jump shot, that you identify how their grades are, that you challenge them to be more than just athletes, that you let them know once again what else you do besides coach. Even if you're a drug dealer, why are you drug dealing? You know, I'm not condoning, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but if you're going to take a position, at least be honest around why you're doing it. And that's the hardest thing sometimes. So once again, yes, it's important that men 
are identified for who they are and what they do. And then secondly, men have to educate themselves. You know, um, I always tell parents, just because someone teaches your son basketball and they play the game, don't mean that makes them a good coach. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same with having men in our son's lives. We as men have to, number one, read ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to educate ourselves as to who we are, what is our Sankofa, once again, our past, our present, our future, so that when we talk to our sons, we're not sending mixed messages. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, not only that, but, you know, uh, I guess every child just needs that special attention, that moment for themselves, that recognition, that validation of who they are, mm -hmm. what they mean to, mm -hmm. our to their parents, mm -hmm. to their teachers. So mm -hmm. I think that you're definitely embedding that message mm -hmm. within them. Good, thank you. Um, I understand your, mo your motto is, in life is be humble mm. and grateful for life. It is alone from God and not an entitlement. Yeah. Please share with us how that came into your life and how you mm. utilize it today. Do you share it with uh, your young males also and students. Yeah, um, before every group that we have, especially Buzz, we have a proverb that we use and that goes on our agenda, on the calendar, and we look at that and we sort of uh, sort through it and talk about what that means. Um, that actually came from my mom. Um, wow. She always taught each and every one of us that, you know, you're a blessing from God, but remember, you're just that. You know, you're a blessing. Be humble around everything that you have. Mm -hmm share with others and treat people the way you want to be treated, as the old saying goes. I think all of us heard that one time or another. Yes. So I, I kind of looked at that as a model that I wanted to um, use for myself. You know, I always wanted to never forget who I am, where I come from, and be humble in all that I do and understand that I answer to God, so I'm not fearful or afraid to step forward and do the things that I do, but at the same time, be humble. Mm -hmm. And I've come to find that, you know, people who know me will always say that, well, he's kind of quiet and laid back, but once you get him involved and active, he stays committed to that. So that's part of, of what that's all about. And even till this day, my mother passed in 2007. And I remember my dad saying to me, you know, Raheem, um, I remember your mother used to always talk about being humble, mm -hmm. you know, and being resourceful and being upfront and standing right up to do the things that are right. And I miss her so much around that. Now I understand what she's saying. So it's funny because after every time we talk, he always leaves the conversation by saying, Raheem, do everything in life that you want to do because it's never promised to you and remain humble. Mm -hmm. So I always make that part of my daily prayers as well, thanking God for just not being me, but also for um, that information and the ability to understand and articulate that into my life every day. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit more about some of the success stories from, from BUDS mm -hmm. or in some of your students, uh, the type of influence and impact yeah. that you've had uh, through these programs that you've been servicing. Yeah. Well, um, since 1997, about 630 young men have partnered into Buds. Have been uh, have a membership into Buds. I, I don't I don't call it um, you know like came through Buds because they're right. still a part of Buds. Um, all of them have graduated grammar school, high school, and a lot of them have went off to college. Some of them are fathers now. Um, some of them have their own businesses. Some of them do a great things here in Patterson and around the country. Um, it's interesting because I came in and saw one of the young men that came through Buds and he's sitting out here going through this training and it's always good to see him. Um, he is what I talked to you about earlier, um, having young men that have that spirit and that energy. He's always had very strong energy. Um, so, you know, um, the success is just watching these young men be teachers. I have young men who came to my program who are now teaching at Kennedy and they'll come down on their break and just talking about some of the things that I shared with them, some of the examples, getting them involved in community service, taking them to, you know, educational programs, um, taking them to events, you know, talk calling them on weekends, talking to them about their birthdays, taking them to visit their dads in prison. You know, just keeping them actively involved. And most importantly, uh, I realized that teaching them their culture and giving them a chance to live out their culture, introducing them to who they are, and, and had given them a vision, a realistic vision as to what they can do with their lives, um, I see the dividend paying off. You know, and it's not in the rewards that I get, it's really in just watching them come back into Patterson and work with other young men. Um, example, I have a young man who came through the program, he's now working at Straight and Narrow with other young men, with young teens. He's running a teen program at Straight and Narrow. And he talks about how sitting down and coming through school base and watching me do what I do as a coordinator of a program like school base has sort of laid a foundation for something that he might want to do later on. You know, I got a young man who's working at a major university in North Carolina who calls him up in sales all the time, coming through school base, coming through buds, help me to realize what I want to do. So those are the success stories and, I, and there's so many more um, that I'm very proud of, not just once again because of who I am, but because of what God has laid on me to be able to do mm -hmm. and being able to provide this as a, a um, sounding board to where young men can go. And, and there are great things happening now with BUDS. Um, last year we had three of my young men come right here in this set 
And as I stated to you when we was off stage, I purposely did not come on with them because I wanted to see if they had the information, if they were getting it, if they were implementing it. And I can tell you, I was never more proud of what they were able to share um, about their community. So BUDS itself, I'm, I'm grateful to God for that. And for those viewers that are out there or parents mm -hmm. and want to get their child involved in BUDS, how do they go about doing that? All they have to do is give me a call. And if you want, I can give out the number. Yes. 973-747-4139. That's my cell. Give me a call. I'll, I'll meet with them, invite them. I always invite parents to the program to see it. I never go over things on the phone. I invite them out. I want them to come in and sit in a meeting, bring their son. And then it's not just for buds. If you need information, if you yeah. need resources, if you're just finding out that you're not communicating with your son, call me up. You know, uh, and my, my door is always open. I never turn young men away, even though they said 13 and 19. Whatever's going on at any age with our young men, those who know me know I don't turn away anybody. Just one more time, that sure. number again. 973-747-4139 is my cell. I'll give them the office at the number. Um, give them the number at the office. 973-321-0541 is the office number. There you heard it, parents. That's the telephone number to reach Mr. William Smallwood if you want to integrate your child in one of his programs and also for the book as well. Mm -hmm. And any closing remarks for our viewers and our audience and our young male out there right now? Yeah. Let, let me just add this too um, as a contact. If they want to go to the website, uh, my email is raheembuzz at yahoo.com. Okay. Raheembuzz at yahoo.com is where you can also get information. Um, I, I think that earlier I talked about collectively as a community coming together. Mm -hmm and building foundations and bridges and partnerships that will allow us to look at our community as a whole and get involved. I challenge each and every one of us to look at what we do just on our block. Just start with your block. See what you can do to better your block. Um, you know, I think it's unrealistic to believe that we can make major changes in Patterson by just trying to wait for the bureaucracy, our state, our federal to come down and save us. We've never been that way as a people in Patterson. It's, you know, I remember early on, like I said, there were many organizations, many faith-based organizations, many community organizations, parents collectively working together on each block. And then that block would work with the neighborhood, the neighborhood would work with the community as a whole, going back to what you were saying about a village. You know, we need to start doing that again. And, and I, I, once again, not just speaking to be speaking, I do this every Saturday. Um, in July of last year, we started a community neighborhood block association and then we started a neighborhood watch. And we would get, out, get up every Saturday, I'll be up tomorrow morning at 7.30, at 6.30, at 6.30, every Saturday morning at 6.30, and start cleaning around just our neighborhood. And then we put up what we call a resource information board. And I would get information from throughout the community and put that on the board. And what I found is that a lot of the young brothers who were hanging in that area would come to me and about four of them joined Job Corps. I mean, I'm sorry, youth bill, and graduated. One of them is doing an apprenticeship. We had about four or five young men around the holidays last year who got jobs. We had about three young men that got back in school. And I think there's maybe about six to 700 people who utilize that resource board. I get phone calls, even from some council people, about how the community as a whole has changed just in that neighborhood in terms of how it look, how the young men are no longer hanging on certain parts of the corners, how they're respecting the senior citizens again. You can see a major difference in a year's time. When we first started doing the cleanup, we were taking like 12 and 13 bags of garbage. Now we're down to a half a bag. So my point is, we have a responsibility as a community to look at each block, each neighborhood, and start working inward, out, and utilize resources. Hold each division, hold each person that says that they are responsible for an agency, are a position of, of power in the city accountable. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I think that's my message. Let's pull together as a community again and let's start saving our children. Our children are looking at us to see what we're going to do. And we're failing them right now. Mm -hmm. And they're out in the streets because they're trying to get answers. We're shutting our doors. We're not out there challenging them. I'll close by saying if you really want to make a difference in our community, if you really want to save our children, you got to get out in the streets where they are. There has never been a movement in this country I don't care which one you look at, civil rights, you know, uh, gay and lesbian movement, mm -hmm. women's movement, uh, black nationalist movement, where young people have not taken the lead. You take your pick. Every movement in this country has been with young people. If we don't teach them that history and don't challenge them and get out there and start talking to them, we're going to lose another generation and it's going to be our fault. And I don't want to see that happen. I believe each of us have the responsibility to play and the only way that's going to happen is if we start challenging each other to do more.
Thank you so much for that message, Mr. Smallwood. You're very welcome. We would like to thank you once again, uh, Mr. Smallwood, for joining us today at Impact Community. And like he says, let's be our own change agents here in the city of Patterson. Let's utilize the resources that we already have and, and start to heal our city one more time again and hold everyone accountable. So with that in mind, we want to thank you once again. You're if you want to learn more uh, and more information about Mr. William Rahim Smallwood, please look at the bottom of the screen and you will definitely find out more information about him. I and the Impact Crew would like to thank the viewers out there one more time for joining us. And once again, knowledge is power and power has impact. Take care. Bye -bye. Hi there, I am TR, the director and producer of Impact, here on the Patterson Public Access Cable Channel 75. Thank you for tuning in. This episode has been sponsored by A Rose's Petals, located at 472 Broadway, right here in Patterson, New Jersey, between Madison Avenue and East 18th Street. Call A Rose's Petals for your floral arrangements and or any other requests.